Are we on? Are we there? Are we there yet? I don't know. Looks like we're on. Looks like we're on. Hey, everybody. Uh, I should say it the way. Hello, friends, like Joe Rogan. Um, I'm Andy, and that is Greg over there. We are happy to be with you again this week just to come in and uh, say hello, talk about some random stuff, check in with you, um, share some stuff that's happening here at Northridge and just the random stuff that's going through each of our heads. Hey, Greg, how are you doing, Greg? You having a good week? Having a great week. Yeah? Why? Oh, just been good. <laughs> you were just complaining about your planter fascia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The planters is back. I used to have it at both feet like, oh, man, like six, eight years ago, and it disappeared. It was gone. Where'd it go? Well, it didn't really disappear. I think, so I snapped my ankle, had this big surgery, and have pins and plates and stuff in my leg. How long ago was that? Six years, a little over six years. Like right before you got to Northridge? Uh, yeah, a couple yeah. months before. Yeah. Um, it was right before Riley was born. So uh, if you could picture me down in the backyard and Jordan being like a week away from <laughs> <laughs> having a baby trying to, uh, and I was in the mud, like I slipped in the mud. Yeah, long story. Anyway, but I think some of the like recovery drugs or whatever, the anti-inflammatory stuff that I was on, I think wiped out the planter's fasciitis. But like two weeks ago, out of the blue, it just came back in my left foot and it just hurts. Hmm. But you, had, you were dealing with that for a while. Maybe you need new shoes. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know uh, about I three need to stop complaining about it. <laughs> about three years yeah. ago, man, right in my right foot. And I love these shoes because they're so comfortable. This is podiatry and talk. they're cool, but uh, <laughs> anybody have any hey dudes? Kids on the street call them dudes, I guess. Um, I've been buying these a long time ago. Now the kids are just starting to buy them. And they're like, what? Oh, you mean dudes? I'm like, yeah, hey dudes. Like, nobody calls them hey dudes. Anyway, the hey dudes, they're great shoes, but they come with this really paper thin sole that's super flat. And after a couple years of wearing those things, and I have like four pairs of these things, um, they gave me plantar fasciitis, mostly in my right foot, but kind of in both of them for a while. So I ended up buying these um, inserts. Um, that have been really good. So I, I bought like four or five sets of those and put them in all my Hey Dude shoes because I love wearing those things. They're super comfy and casual, like I'm like I'm casual. Um, but if you have any fun, not fun, helpful uh, planner tricks for Greg. <laughs> this is old guys talking about feet. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you have anything that work for you, um, get, let, hit Greg up. Let him know <laughs> how to get rid of that. Uh, it's uh, painful, actually, it just being actually really painful. on my feet all on the yeah. weekend, and Greg is yeah. too because he's helping, you know, with connection stuff. Man, it can get debilitating. Uh, you can't even run, and he's got kids mm -hmm. and a dog, and I don't have anybody. So I mean, I got two dogs, but uh, they run on their own. Um, mm -hmm. So besides the planner, how's your week going? Pretty good. Yeah, and had what? a little bike ride in the Henry's Woods the other day. Andy does Who's not woods? know who, where, or, or who Henry is, or where his woods are. Henry the Eighth. Henry's Woods is a popular little wooded area here in Rogers that has trails, and took the boys up there with their bikes, and we did a couple of loops around the trail, riding bike. That was nice. It's been I a see, nice week. I nice see some people uh, every once in a while doing like wedding pictures over there. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, we, fall pictures are really nice back there too. Senior pictures. But the problem with that is you can't do that right now. You have to wait till the fall. So there's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, senior pictures, <laughs> wedding <laughs> pictures. Oh man. Um. Senior, I don't know, prom pictures. Senior or, moment. Or, yeah. Like right now. Um. What else is any, anything else exciting for you this week? Um. I found out a kind of a cool fun fact this week. You want to know a fun fact? You know what the smartest bird is? The penguin. No. Oh, is that a bird? <laughs> I don't know. Is it a flightless bird? <laughs> or is it a fish with wings? A <laughs> fish with wings? No, because it, it doesn't no. breathe underwater. But it um, can hold its breath for a really long time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I know. it's a bird. An eagle. No. No. What's the smartest bird, Greg? Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Th this oh, so that's so good. <laughs> randomly, 
in the day Albert and the night, Einstein. he sends me <laughs> weird stuff that he finds, uh, who knows, in the crevices of the internet, funny memes and jokes. And uh, thank, good, thank goodness you never <laughs> sent me that. That was an Evans joke book that we read at oh, night goodness. before bed. He sent me a meme last night that I thought was pretty funny about uh, adulthood. <laughs> what did it say? Yeah. But, um, adulthood is the worst hood I've ever lived in. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so ghetto it's in so here. It's so ghetto in here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's yeah funny. That was funny. Um, awesome. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, if you have any planners, suggestions for him, uh, let him know. It is a beautiful day. I cannot wait to get, I got to get this hard top off on my Jeep and uh, get the doors off because it's about that time and season. I hope you're doing something fun and enjoying the nice weather. Take the kids out for a walk or take the dog out to the park. Um, enjoy this beautiful weather. Hopefully it's just the beginning of a series of months here that's just um, nice like this. And it's pretty relatively quiet kind of, I don't know. On the news, like I was scrolling through the Yahoo news feed just a little bit ago, and it seemed like there was it was not f fun news headlines. In fact, most of them were like, you know, bad or negative. And then there was this one about this guy saving this elephant. <laughs> that was like the only happy thing. But there isn't like any major. I got one. Uh, Greg has something. Did Let's you see yesterday in Houston? The tiger that got loose. Someone owns some guy a tiger. Defended himself with a handgun. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. That. Because there's a tiger running through the neighborhood, <laughs> and it's, I mean, the dumb tiger didn't realize he's in Texas, and everyone's, <laughs> everyone's packing right. Well, but, we 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 learned <laughs> from uh, last year's quarantine with yeah. the Tiger King that there's a lot more privately owned tigers than even in mm -hmm. captivity in zoos and stuff like that. Yeah, I think right. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. It is weird. I thought only like Mike Tyson owned a, a tiger, and Mike Tyson and uh, who are those and the magician guys, the one that got mauled yeah. by the magician, yeah, yeah, by the tiger, yeah. Anyway, but um, so yeah, it seems relative. Wouldn't it be funny if not funny, but it would be strange if it wasn't his tiger. It was just like another random tiger <laughs> that <laughs> that mauled him. He's just walking down the street in Texas, and a tiger jumped uh, out. He went there. to go pet it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, things seem pretty. I don't know, quiet for the moment. Things down and down. T I don't know. Anybody been downtown re recently? If you've been downtown, just throw in the chat what it's been like for you. Um, things around Rogers seem pretty good, right? Although I went to the Chipotle Rogers yesterday, and they were out of uh, cheese, mild salsa, um, and lettuce. <laughs> yeah, I know. Those are like three of the food groups in Minnesota. <laughs> and I still... <laughs> Cheese and mild salsa. I still anyway. bought something. <laughs> but so what did you buy? I, I just bought the, the Can rice. Can I just have some beans? <laughs> rice and chicken, and then I also got the yeah. fajitas as a substitute for the lettuce. I always do that. I always get the fajita, yeah, fajita they veggies. Always, maybe too much, too many mm. of those peppers. Anyway, it wasn't as good without the lettuce and the, the cheese. Anyway, that's the worst of the news that I have. So what's happening around here, Greg? What are some things that are going on? We're just going to do a quick uh, roundup of uh, events um, that are coming up here so you know. And then in a little bit here, I'm going to have s uh, a guest on with us, and we're going to kind of talk with him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing is right away, this weekend, we have um, this event coming up. And why don't you talk about that for a moment, Greg? That would be our open house for our 2021 high school graduates. Nice. So we've done this the last couple of years here, and um, I think it's been pretty cool to have, well, we couldn't do it last year, of course, but um, a couple of previous years. Well, we did that um, special video with them yeah, getting there. We did yeah, the video, whatever. I mean, but we had to do something different then. Yeah. So we have a meal, and we have... Like each graduate gets their own space, a little table to set up and and um, pictures and, and memories and all that stuff. And it's and that's the key is the the Saturday first yeah. Saturday supper. In fact, it's like the first real big event that we've done in a long time. Yeah. Over all church event, yeah. a year and a, almost a year and a half. Well, we had the men's ministry had um, the big chill, the ice big fishing chill. thing. That is true. But that was Which outside. technically all people could come. Yeah, yeah, but the first big event here in in the building, the building for anyone and everyone to attend. Yeah, and that'll be Saturday. Anybody's invited. Doesn't mm -hmm. cost anything. We're gonna 
do stuff in a super sanitary and safe way. Yep. Um, but the most important thing is you get to come and meet and talk with these graduates, hear a little bit about what they're doing next year, and um, encourage them. That's going to be really cool. So that's this Saturday following the this, this service at 5 o'clock. So that'll be roughly around, what, 6, 10-ish? Something like that. 6, 10, 6, 15-ish. Um, so come on Saturday and, and support the graduates. It's going to be really cool. It would be cool. Um, another thing that's coming up starting this Saturday is our registration for our summer VBS program. And uh, this is the, the Rocky Railway is the theme for the year. And if you go to the website, and Greg will post the link here in the chat. If you go to the website, then uh, into the kids ministry page, you can register. Now, there is no cost, only a suggested uh, free will uh, offering, right? Yep. And uh, you'll want to register quick because there are limited spots available. We're trying to still, you know, be safe. Um, I think it's, what, 150 kids? I don't know what the number is. If you have questions about that and what they're trying to do to, you know, just kind of be be smart about things, talk to Terry or Jackie. But if you go to the web page, uh, the kids' ministry site, or, or, or news and events. Or news and events. Yeah, either one. You'll be able to find a way to register your kid or kids. And that is, uh, when is that? June 21st to 25th. It's a Monday through fr Friday. And um, it's going to be really cool. It's going to be exciting to have all those kids in the building yeah. again. Also, the Little Kids Depot. Yes, so and that's a Tuesday, small. Wednesday, Thursday yeah. thing. 22nd through 24th, and it's in the afternoon, 3 till 4.30 in the afternoon. That's for kids ages 3 and older who have not yet attended kindergarten. So, so the ones three, going into kindergarten. Four, and going into kindergarten, yeah. So, okay. And that's been cool because sometimes when you're that little, you're a little intimidated with all that energy and bigger kids. And so that's, yeah. been, that's been a pretty cool deal. So look for that. Yeah, but it's always a fun thing every year. It is. And we're really excited to be able to do it again. And um, so looking forward to that. What else is coming up, Greg? Kind of anything that you're interested in looking forward to happening here at Northridge? Yes, we have Celebration Weekend coming up. Um, June 5th and 6th, that weekend, which... Ultimately concludes with Celebration Picnic on the 6th, Sunday afternoon, following church services up at Otsego Park. Yep. Always a good time. That's always fun. Um, this year is a little different in that you do need to RSVP, and you could do that on the website. Um, and there's a deadline for the RSVP, too. I believe so, but it's Mo like the Memorial. week of something. Is it Memorial I think it's week? Memorial Weekend. Okay. Yep. Um, that's the weekend before, I think, anyway. Yep. But still, yeah, RSVP, and the reason why is all the food's being catered. And we just need to be good stewards of, <laughs> of that and, and how much food to get. And, and if, if you get there and, you know, to that weekend and realize, ah, oh, I didn't RSVP, I don't know, you could still come. Just, you could bring a picnic lunch, bring your own food or whatever. Or if you don't want to rely on catered food, you could still come and bring your own food. Yeah. I mean, there's no limit um, on the numbers of people, but we are RSVP for food. Yep. Or if you want to grab your own food beforehand and come just for the baptisms yeah because following the meal out yeah. of the park yeah we're going to have some baptisms in the river ben and i are going to go out the, the week before that and um i'm going to toss them in the river a couple times to see where some see safe spots back yeah <laughs> see where some yeah. good spots are to do the baptism so if you want to just come out for the baptism you want to eat your own lunch beforehand come out for the baptism support i know we already have a handful of people who are going to get baptized, yeah. right? That's awesome, yep. Um, and if you're out there and you want to be baptized this uh, June, let us know. You can uh, hit us up. You can email either Greg or I or the office, talk to one of us on the weekend. Um, and when we think about baptism, Greg, uh, let's talk just a, a moment about that. Yeah. Um, at, at Northridge, we see it as simply a public expression of your faith, of what's going on in the inside of the way Jesus has changed and, and moved in your life. And this is an act of um, 
I'm kind of off screen here. Oh no, it's just on your computer. It is just a public statement or uh, expression mm -hmm. of your of your faith in Jesus, right? That's exactly what it is. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you got. Yeah, I took a drink of my. By the way, this is vintage. Um, vintage. Like Twenty-five year old. Uh, water. Yeah. <laughs> That's the last time I've had water. <laughs> Okay, no, that's yeah, probably why you have plantar fasciitis. Probably. Um, no, yes, yeah. So we're, it was actually a serious topic, but ask me a question when I was taking a drink of water. Um, yes, baptism is just that. It's uh, If you have faith in Jesus, this is a public declaration of that. And it's, um, man, it's, it's one of those things I love, like, how you say it, whenever you talk about it from up front. Like, this is something you don't have to pray about. Like, you shouldn't, you don't need to pray about if you should get baptized. If you are a follower of Jesus and you haven't been baptized, then you should do it. And what cooler way to do it than in the Mississippi River with your church family and in a public park um, on what's probably, hopefully, going to be a beautiful day. Yes, and, uh, hopefully. And we will do our best to make sure that you don't float downstream too far. Yeah. Like, usually Pastor Dan's out there with some, like, pool noodles and floaties or something yep and um yeah you won't go you won't yeah. go for it. it you don't go you won't go floating down <laughs> the straight. biggest the, the biggest kind of i don't know concern or whatever is the temperature of the water that's usually people's yeah. biggest thing but and then if you don't like mucky feelings on your yeah. feet you might you could just wear water shoes or something sandals uh that have you know full straps on them not like flip-flops you don't want those to but that's usually the biggest concern. Um, so listen, Andy, I have been, and I'm not like trying to make myself sound cool because we all know that I'm already not cool. <laughs> I have been to the actual Jordan River in Israel. Ooh. And I've, I have had the privilege, like honor, to be able to baptize people. Tell for those Jordan that River. people don't know what Jordan River is. The Jordan River is a river in Israel. It runs from the north down to the south of Israel and it's, we read in the Bible, I mean, that's where Jesus was baptized, and uh, it's interesting. Jordan and I, my wife Jordan and I got, had a chance to go to Israel um, in 2011, and um, yeah, with a group from a church that we were part of then, and, and I got to baptize people, but that was the coldest <laughs> river water. <laughs> it was so cold. It was so cold. It was like shockingly cold. I just didn't expect it to be that cold. Sure. It was super cold, and there's like river otters in there. River otters. River otters swimming Those around. Those can get pretty big, can't they? Uh, yes, like and apparently sometimes they have been known to bite people. Ooh. So we don't have that cold of water. <laughs> you surprisingly, it's Minnesota, but the water isn't as cold as the Jordan River. No, and we don't have like meat eating carnivorous. <laughs> That's the same thing as meat eating. Beagle sized. Beagle sized. <laughs> Otters. Swimming Otters around swimming trying around to trying to bite you while you're being meal. baptized. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, a little mud on the bottom of your feet. Yeah. Hey, big deal. And you could also wear a wetsuit if you wanted to. <laughs> 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 you know, people like go out and ski this early in yeah. the season, they wear wetsuits. If you have a wetsuit and you want to. If uh, you wear a wetsuit, a wetsuit to get baptized, Andy will buy you lunch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, now you, I'll take you. I'll buy you lunch to lunch for my birthday. Um, what else do we got here? We have in the beginning of June we have an opportunity to uh, give to Cross, and they're going to be bringing a truck. It's going to be parked across the street at the school, June fifth, and we're going to try to fill that truck. We're working with I think it's the the Scouts are helping out mm -hmm. with that, um, but bring non perishable food donations to that June fifth. And that whole truck is going to be brought over to Cross in Rogers for the people that that need that um, pantry items, canned meats, vegetable soups, meals, pastas, sauces, tomato paste, etc. You can go to actually go to their website and see. Especially, um, I know they fluctuate with what's the most needed items at the moment. Yeah. So check out what the that might be on their website. June fifth, fill the truck. Um, if you're into softball. We got a men's softball team. Um, Mr. John Shrupp, he's a teacher over at Rogers. He's kind of running stuff. Um, but they usually play right over by the theater, Rogers yep. Movie Theater. Um, Tuesday nights, is it? Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday nights. 
And I know that they need people, and it's just they need just supporters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't think they want a game last year. I don't. I don't know. If I'm wrong, if you're watching this, correct me. But oh. uh, they could use use some. Uh, they could use some help. It's for fun. It's not, no one's out there trying to get discovered by the twins. You would like to win a game, though, right? Don't yeah. You well. Think? Yeah. Okay. I'm just. But saying. I know. <laughs> Uh, speaking of baseball, how's baseball going for you? Anything? Uh, the, the Dodgers are playing a little bit better. Yeah, which is good. I'm I'm sure everyone here is happy to know that how the, the Dodgers <laughs> are doing. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Twins got yeah. uh, beat. They almost yeah had a little bit of a threat in the ninth inning yesterday, but they they put up quite a few runs. Jay Happ, who has been pitching fairly well most of the year, he coughed up a bunch in the first inning. <laughs> <laughs> like mm. seven in the first like four innings or something. I don't know. I didn't. I honestly, I it was one of those nights where I changed the channel and turned it off to watch something else. Um, Sorry, I'm distracted by a dog going to the bathroom out in the church <laughs> parking lot, right? Now. In the parking lot, or is that? Uh, it's a grass area, but oh, still, yeah. it's just sorry. Um, just didn't expect to see that. What other kind of news and events stuff are coming up? Anything else? Speaking of the twins, I had the what's the rookie Kirloff. Yeah, I have him on my fantasy team, but he got hurt. Yeah, but he started so doing he's stuff to like if you looked at yeah. your team. And then you also had two pitchers that uh, mm -hmm. had some trouble. Zach Allen looks like a strain. Allen's out. DeGrom. Well, you don't have well, – Well, I'm going both two leagues. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I get it mixed up. I don't know who's on which. I, are you interested in going to a baseball game this summer? Absolutely. At, uh, anybody yeah. Anybody yeah. interested in going to a Twins game? I cannot wait. Yeah, it's been too long mm -hmm. um, to since I've been to a Target Field, and um, I'd love to go to a game. And so Greg and I know would try to get to a game. If you're interested in going to a game, we'd love to go with you. Maybe get a whole bunch of people that way, because uh, I think if you go together in a group, you can sit together. You can sit together, and yeah, it's not a big. I don't know. But I they're opening up. I I saw <coughs> like more seats or more capacity or whatever. And do so. they have like I I know some like this is for all you. California people, like some of their stadiums have vaccinated areas. Yeah, but I think that's a way of selling. I saw that on the Dodger game the other night. I think that's just like a... Does Target Field have that? I don't know. See, I don't know if that's a thing, like a real thing, or if that's just they're leveraging that to be able to sell more seats or... Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's a marketing deal or what. But if they're going to say so. this section is a vaccinated section, then it has to be a vaccinated section. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So. But still, July first or seventy percent vaccinated will kind of lift all this crazy stuff for the most part, right? I think so. Yeah, except for large, large gatherings like Target Twins Field. games. <laughs> Twins games. They'll still have a limited yeah, capacity, I think so. right? I believe. Yeah, but we won't here. I don't know. And you won't have to wear yeah. your mask here Starting at church. July first. Yeah, we don't have limited capacity though. No, yeah. and we can fit as many. In fact, um, yeah, you're invited to come back on the weekends. I have a fact check for fact you. Fact check for me. Are we getting fact check now? We have Andy Rubel, who some of you may know or may not know. This is his mug, by the way, making a parent's world's <laughs> okay as dad. <laughs> the best part being that it was actually broken and re-bended and um, re it actually put together came, uh, two hand broke. Oh, broken. yeah, yeah. The handle was broken when he and he repaired got it, it with yeah. Shugru, that like Shugru. molding clay stuff that you could get at the hardware store. But Andy is our fact checker, and he just texted me saying CDC just said that fully vaccinated people can go without masks in most cases. Fact checked. Now, does that override what the state of Minnesota says? I don't know because the state could put on their own type of mandates and rules, right? So yeah. I think CDC doesn't. Isn't it a governing body? I mean, it's like suggestions, I believe. I don't think they could rule or, like, make a rule or a law. Like, okay. I mean, I don't know if the CDC could even do, like, a blanket mandate. Maybe, I don't know. But there's a whole lot of things that happened that I didn't know could happen. So there you go. So that's a Wall Street Journal. It says yeah. vaccinated people can stop wearing face masks, indoor or outdoor. I didn't write the article. I don't know why you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Fact checker Andy. He's leaving. Um, let's see. Yeah, it'd be interesting to Here's check that out. There's a fact check article from Andy, but it's from The Onion. 
So <laughs> <laughs> this is just fact checked with the Babylon Bee. I don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, it's actually the Wall Street Journal. Oh. So if you're online and you want to check that out, um, I don't know. Jeez, we started this with talking about feet, and now we're Wall Street talking Journal? about faces. Oh, this Wall is Street Journal. man, it's getting worse. It's getting older <laughs> by the second. Uh, Literally, we are getting older by the second. We are. Um, Any other Northridge events that are happening? Northridge events? Uh, did we miss one? Um, let's see. I don't see. think so. Not events. We're excited to see, like, maybe some potential in the coming weeks of, like, groundbreaking and some activity around the build, the surge campaign, um, the build there. And so many of seen that trees have been taken down back there and um yeah we're just kind of waiting for stuff to happen with that so that's exciting um i don't know should i talk about this now yeah we have one more thing that greg's going to share one about more thing and, and then we're going to have our guests if they end up showing up is here our guest soon. here uh they'll be here in a little bit here he's such a diva he's probably just getting <laughs> makeup and Getting prepped and everything. See if you guys can guess who it is before he gets yeah. here. Um, what do you got for us, Greg? What I have is an app, a Northridge Fellowship app, smartphone app. That's what I have. An app. An app. Application. So we have been working on an app for a while. We've been talking about it for a while. And it just, I don't know, timing and different things platforms and stuff we just haven't really settled on. So anyway, we got this app we've been working on building the last several, oh, a couple of months, and it's very close to being ready. So it's exciting because this is going to allow us to do some things um, that I think will make th life and uh, just information a little bit easier and, and functional for Northridge folks, for families. What screen do you have up there? Just the home. Just the home. Page. I don't know if they can even. So see it is. It. It's. I mean, it's a work in progress. It's almost done, but there's a few bugs and stuff that we're trying to figure out on, like playback. For example, we'll be able to watch messages on there live, hopefully, and that's what we're working on now is live messaging, and then also just access archive, like YouTube archive or um, past services, and you can pull them up there. There is a Read Through the Bible podcast that's pretty cool on there. That's just a daily listen to, I don't know, it's about 12 minutes or something of just Bibles. Is that you? Bibles. It's not me. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> um, it's just a general one that found, and it's not, it's not even. There's not like commentary or something. It's really just anything. someone reading the scripture. Francis there is a link. Chan. No, okay. it's not even um, Darth Vader. What's Darth his name? <laughs> James Earl Jones. <laughs> Um, That'd be interesting, Darth Vader reading through the Bible. Yeah, that's. I used they used to have it at like uh, Costco. Like Darth Vader, not, not Darth just, Vader, okay. but hit the, uh, the actor James Earl Jones. Yeah. okay. He's I thought you meant the greatest like, voices of all time. Yeah, he was Darth Vader's voice, but right. I thought you meant like in the Darth Vader. No, that would be kind of weird. That, that's what I. <laughs> Speaking of Darth Vader, though. <laughs> what about R two D two? I did see from the youth retreat last weekend. I saw the. Family Mandalorian <laughs> videos that, that they put together. Yeah. And if you have a high school or a middle school age should child, you should them. ask them about it because they're, they're pretty funny. Yeah. The concept being that, like, if Mando was just like an everyday ordinary guy, ordinary guy, just working a nine to five. Yeah, I um, think he worked at an for insurance State Farm. company. <laughs> yeah. He had khakis and yeah. a red shirt on. He looked like Jake. Yeah. It's <laughs> <Jake. laughs> yeah. oh, funny. Um, Okay, so back so to the app. <laughs> where were we? Can, so are there's we also a link to U version, but you mentioned that. Okay. But yeah, there's a link to. Are Bible, we streaming? So. Uh, are we able to watch it? What we're doing right now? On uh, not right now. That's what I was actually okay. trying to see if that would work. There, I'm right. trying so to figure out some bugs with that. It's one of the bugs. Yeah, eventually we will be able to get a notification. I hope as soon as something goes live, you could go through the app, and then also um, one of the most exciting parts of that is. Um, a quick and easy way to look up events, the calendar of the church, including check-in. So you can check in early, um, up to two hours before an event. So let's say it's, you know, church Sunday morning, getting the kids out of bed, in the car, and I've been told, I'm always here already, but I've been told that's a struggle. 
to get kids in the car. And sometimes it's just not very fun to get the whole family into church. And then you have to get to the parking lot and then, oh, we got to go check them in and get them in the right classes and all that. Well, with the app, we'll have a pre-check-in feature where you could check yourself in, you could check your kids in to the appropriate class, and then it gives you a little barcode. And right when you come in, you just scan. We'll have these scanners that you scan the barcode, and it prints out your sticker. So you don't have to go to the computer station and wait in line or anything like that or type anything. Or if you're like me, who has one child who last year... You have three children. I have three children. Okay. But one child who ran ahead of my wife and the family about a year ago to go check them all in. But what he did was he checked his older brother into the girls' class so that it would say <laughs> first to fifth grade girls on his sticker. Did he did like, that on purpose? Oh, absolutely he did it on he, purpose. I That's did, how did he ultimate, even know how to do that? Because he's an evil genius. That's uh, It's the ultimate little brother <laughs> move. This is hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh, uh, EJ, you're um, Yeah, that's... I was. I don't know if you wanted to. Oh, that's okay. No, that's <laughs> everybody um, probably knows. Everyone knows who that would be. <laughs> uh, that was actually it was. Um, yeah, it was probably a year and a half ago. So I thought that was genius. But you, will uh, I wonder if his name tag is underneath the table because he oftentimes it might be one under. of them put puts it underneath. Yeah, that was tables. Asher's, and was it was like yeah, two that's, years old. That's what like, I mean, because it would have been Asher's with the fifth grade girls, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that was hilarious. So you could avoid that kind of stuff. But anyway, we'll have just like se like a separate little scanner station where you could just boom, you're already checked in. You just hit that scanner with your barcode and it prints your stickers right there and then send your kids It's like going to the airport. Yeah. TSA pre-check. That's right. Contact free. Yep. You know, um so there's that. There's there's just a lot of other features, just ways to um quick get info and about different things and you give uh, give uh, online through there you can give yep yeah, absolutely through push pay push pay um, right from the app it takes you over to your push pay so when you're logged in you could go over and give and um it, it's gonna be pretty cool we're, we're pretty excited about this so yeah so we don't have a specific date for that but it's coming um, soon it's coming soon. soon and then once we launch it we'll let you know and yeah. then we'll also have just kind of a little video walk through that grego kind of walk through with this phone maybe mm -hmm. even do something in the service i don't know Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'll have Evan do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Be, uh, a risky, risky business. Yeah, but it would be funny. It would be. Could you do all three services? I don't know. I'll ask him. Okay. All right. I'll have to check with his manager. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be your, uh, your, his, your wife? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Well, you should try to do the morning thing for church sometime because I'm the one who should be saying from what I heard, it's kind of a... A big ordeal to get no, kids. No, look, I, I do kids getting them out the door for school. Okay. So I know it's difficult, but I'm just, <laughs> it's just like, well, I'm here already, like early. So sure. yeah. that's what I mean. On church morning, it's different. But yeah. no, I know it's hard. It's, it's, it's a pain. Like, no matter how much time you have. It's not enough. Mm -mm, because they wait till it's five minutes until you have to go, and then they do everything. And you live two minutes away. Oh, yeah. 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 Less than. Less than? I'd say about two minutes. Mm. Depends <laughs> if you're walking or running or biking or driving. Sure. I think you might be able to walk faster than drive, or it's going to be close. Hmm. But um, I still think it's more than two minutes. It's probably more than two <laughs> minutes. But it's difficult to get kids out the door is my point. <laughs> I hear that. I mean, I don't know. And so if we can help with any of that, we can. with this app, Boom. we can. With yes. the app. Yes. So... Any else? Anything else, Greg, that you want to share before you jump off here? Mm, no, nah, I think we're good. All right, cool. Um, I did have another joke. Please hit me. So this guy's walking down the street. He's out for a stroll. Walks into his doctor's office. Checks in. Goes in. Sits down. Waits for Doc to come in. Doctor comes in. He's like, "Hey, what's going on?" He says, I'm just, I don't know, it's something not right. I just don't feel well. Like, okay, so, you know, they take his blood pressure and his temperature and all that other stuff they do at the doctor's office. I don't know. I haven't been in a while. <laughs> I don't know what they do. Good. But, they, you know, they do all that stuff. Listen, they, don't they put that little metal disc thing on your chest and tell you to take a deep breath? 
or your back or whatever. That's, that's what. That's yeah, that thing. I, that, see, I don't want to say it. <laughs> So he's in his doctor's office. He's like, Doc, I just don't feel good, man. He's like, well, what's going on? Anything specific? No, I mean, I just, okay, this is going to sound odd, but the more I think of it, I just, I, I feel like I might be a moth. The doctor says, a moth? What do you mean? Wait, what? Like like little ghetto butterfly things? <laughs> yeah, a ghetto moth. Uh, how do you describe a moth? He's like, I think I might be a moth. He says, well, why? Well, you don't need me. You need. I think you need more different kind of help. I think you need to go find a therapist. Like go, go to, <laughs> a veterinarian. No, you need to go down to the the uh, psychiatrist down the down the street here. And he's like, well, you know, why? If you think you're a moth, why why did you come in here? And he says, because the light was on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Greg Tizer, everybody. Brax Carvet, everybody. Yes. I say hello to my next guest. This is going to be Brax Carvet. Hello. That was Brax. such a great, great joke. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing better after I heard that joke. Yeah. You know, it that like was lowered the bar. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I feel so much more comfortable being on here now. So. Uh, I'm sure most of you know who this is. This is Brax. He is our youth pastor. Um, how's it going, man? Good. Having a good day? Yeah. Having yeah. a good week? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. We uh we just I'm kind of coming down off of a off of a high from our youth retreat Friday and Saturday, so. Yes. Yeah. So I'm tired. And so give us like just one quick hitter highlight from that retreat. Uh well, I got to wear a Mandalorian helmet. So, you know, <laughs> if you know Star Wars, then that's I that's what I got to do. Yeah, so. Greg Greg shared about the family Mandalorian. Yeah. Did you watch skit? it? Okay, yeah. it's you know, in my in my humble opinion, I think it, they're fantastic. Yes, so. credit to Jacob Worthington. Absolutely, for that idea. He was Jacob Worthington was instrumental in being my funny man. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. gosh, yeah. Colin and Jacob are both hilarious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, that first episode. You know, send me an email if you want to get the. There's an unlisted YouTube link that yeah. I can I can send. And you. And if you had a kid so. that was at the retreat, ask yeah. them. Yeah. Have a conversation about the retreat. Yeah, that's that would be better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, what's uh, other than having a kid not too long ago? Yeah, yeah, we had our oh. our, our daughter Valkyrie on St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. So she's just like already super awesome. Nice. You know, St. Patrick. Yeah. Clovers. And um, God. She's doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Jess is doing well. Yeah. Clint is. Doing well. He's a funny little he guy. He is. Man. He is hilarious. He uh, made an appearance in the video sketch yeah, too. Yep. Yep. In the second episode he's of Family Man He's like the second supporting actor. Yeah. Oh gosh. And he was great. Yeah. I mean, he he gave me very good material. He handed me a bowl. Nice. And that that set up a really good joke. <laughs> and yeah. So pretty. Anything awesome. else um, new along with with family and kids stuff? What's new in your life? Man, uh, I just finished up a semester of seminary online, so that's done now. I just got done last week, actually. So at the same time the retreat was going on, I was wow, finishing what a up. Weekend. Yeah, it was it was a busy week. <laughs> so and then you're on a little break <laughs> for how long? I've got I'm off for I think another eight weeks, something eight like that. Weeks, so, kind so of into the summer. Yeah, halfway through the summer. Yeah, I just want to enjoy summer, man. I don't nice. want to do. The weather is super nice today. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah. Go out and do it's something. Like I said that earlier. Something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, see any good movies lately? Um, okay, so the most recent movie I watched was Nobody. Um, I don't even know who's the lead actor in that. I don't know the guy from uh, Better Call Saul. And, yeah, and something else. Probably something else. Um, but. So I wouldn't, I mean, as the youth pastor, like, I can't recommend that you watch it's it with a, yeah, your kids. It's rated R. Yeah. And it's you know, for good reasons. Yeah. Yep. yep. So, but that was, you know, if if the, the adults watching want to watch a good, you know. <laughs> action movie. Yeah. Action Kind of like John Wick. Yeah. yeah. So if you've seen that. It's it's a little funnier than John Wick, though. Yeah. John There's Wick not doesn't a have a whole lot of humor <laughs> in John Wick. <laughs> yeah. But no, that was the most recent movie that I watched that's new. Um, I just watched Lion King one and a half the other night. One and a half. Yeah. 
I don't know what that is. What so, that means. <laughs> it's not the live action. It's not the line of action. And it's one. not the no. one and a half. So there's Lion King. If you, if you go off the cartoon versions, there's Lion King. There's Lion King 2. There's also Lion King 1 and a half. There's a Lion King 2? The, yeah, this is all straight to video. Okay. So this is, it, you know, never was hit in theaters. So if, if Lion King 1 is Hamlet, then Lion King 2 is Romeo and Juliet. Because that's what it is. You know this, right? The Lion King is just Hamlet, but with lions and with a better ending. Okay. It's, Hamlet's just a tragedy. So, so that's, that's, why, that's one of the reasons it's so good. Besides the cinematography, the acting, all that kind of stuff, that's one of the reasons why the movie is so good is because it's just Hamlet. I never knew that. Yeah. So there, there you go. So did you know that, Greg? Well, Ava yeah. Avatar <laughs> is just Pocahontas, Avatar is Pocahontas in Pocahontas. space. I don't like that movie. Space. <laughs> so, Lion so King Lion 2. Lion King 1.5 is what? One, well, it's one and a half. One, yeah. Isn't that 1.5? Well, it's it's not marketed that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's so it's take it takes the story of Timon and Pumbaa, and it it puts it next to the events of the first movie. So it shows like what Timon and Pumbaa are up to during all of the first Lion King. And I was pleasantly surprised. It They're was the Hakuna Matata dudes. Yeah, they're the Akuna Matata guys. Okay. So it shows you how uh, Timon like stumbled across Akuna Matata. It's it's from the baboon Rafiki. Actually, they run into each other, and Rafiki, Rafiki tells him. Rafiki is the one that helped Simba, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I so, know like barely anything about. Yeah. This stuff. So and, well, now that you know, children, <laughs> like Disney Plus isn't on because I want to watch Star Wars. It's <laughs> it's because cartoons are on there. Bluey is on there. If you haven't watched Bluey, Bluey. Bluey is a it's a BBC show. It's like BBC Australia, and it's uh, it's a it's like eight minute episodes of this family of Australian uh, like sheepdogs, and they talk and stuff like that. It's a cartoon. It's fantastic. It's like the most wholesome thing that you will ever see in your life. We go from nobody, yeah, to Bluey. I'm a deep man. <laughs> I have a wide range of tastes. Uh, so, uh, what, yeah. what about TV? Any watch, watch any good TV stuff? Well, Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah. I mean, that was great. So I was very... I won't go into no details here. because I hate the internet so much for spoiling things all the time. Like when I watched WandaVision, I was behind a few episodes and the same thing happened for Falcon and Winter Soldier. I was scrolling on Facebook and there's all these websites that Facebook is like, hey, we bet you'll like this this web yeah, post. But from, the, but from what I what I gathered, how many weeks is it okay for something new and hot like that to wait to say anything? Because it was almost a month before you watched the last episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. But the internet wasn't, <laughs> like, the internet didn't care as much as <laughs> they did. That's what I mean. Like, it's with like WandaVision. A show like that, a month should yeah, be enough. Yeah, that's, that's probably fair. And then they fair. should be able to talk about that's it. That's probably fair. WandaVision, it was like, the, the episode would come out, and I'd be out on, you know, on Facebook on Saturday. And people would be like, oh, did you, oh, your, Vision, and I'm like, Your friends? No, because I I never saw any spoiler articles. It's like IGN. You didn't see was that. one of them. I, I didn't. I hated them. I was so mad. I was like, why would you do this? They shouldn't talk about it. They're just a no. video, video game network. Yeah, they're not. They're more than that at yeah. this point, probably. <laughs> they think they are. They're not. Yeah. Talking to you, IGN. I don't like you. Uh, you you also like to sad. read, though. Don't I do you? like to yeah. read. Yeah. Reading any good books right now? I'm reading Lord of the Rings right now. Oh. Yeah. So I the, I never the, the whole trilogy. The whole trilogy. Yeah. Uh, so I'm in two towers right okay. now. Okay, so you're in the second one. Yep. So they're just they're now hanging out with Spiegel, wow. Gollum. Okay. So, yeah. So I'm reading that right now. I'm really enjoying that. I'd never read Lord of the Rings growing up, so this is my first time reading Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen the movies all the way through. Um, I know. Yeah, you would think. You would think. But here's the thing. Like I was late to the game. You know, watching Lord of the Rings. I suppose when they all came out, when did Bless you. Thank you. I feel blessed. Return of the King. What year did that come out? <sighs> I don't know. Was it was it in the early two thousands or was it in the nineties? No. Was it all in the nineties? No, no, none of them came out in the nineties. Really? Right. 
Really? Right. You mean to tell me that Phantom Menace came out before Lord of the Rings? Yes. Pretty sure. That's Andy's Googling things, I think. Yeah. Because this is important. So talk, about, talk about the Two Towers. So I'm enjoying it. I can tell you that. Let me tell you some of the backstory. So I, I hang out with youth, and, and they, you know, we frequently exchange, like, what movies are good, what movies we should see. If you haven't seen this movie, you should see that. And we talked about Lord of the Rings one day, and I was like, well, so here's the thing. I was late to the game. Everyone had seen Lord of the Rings before me. So then if I go and hang out with people and they want to watch Lord of the Rings, guess what they're doing the entire time? Talking about it. They're talking about the movie. I don't want to talk about the movie while it's happening when I've never seen it. You can do that afterwards. But So I was very distracted, you know, and Lord of the Rings is kind of hard to follow to begin with. <laughs> you know? So I decided I'm going, to, I'm going to read all the books and then I'm going to watch the extended cut. Like, the, you know, the one that's like... Three and a half oh, hours yeah. long for each movie. Yeah. yeah, like it's a whole work day to just watch through the movies. That's that's what. Yeah, so Fellowship of the Rings came out in 2001. That is baffling to that me. Is. And then... Uh, <clears throat> I was Return six of the King, years old. Return of the King came out 2003 because it was one year in between each of them, I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... So 2003 was... 2001... Oh my Fellas gosh! Of the Rings, two thousand two, Two Towers, and then Return of the King came out in two thousand three. My childhood. So you would have been in two thousand three. How old? I was. I was eight. I feel like my child is, you know, impoverished. Well, I mean, you're eight. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know I should have you, seen them. It's PG thirteen. Yeah, but like when they came out. Yeah, I guess orcs and goblins probably yeah. would have scared me. It was kind of. You know, some of those get freaky. Yeah. Like especially when they're, I don't know, you've seen it. Kind of. You've seen them when they're kind of growing them in the ground. Do you know what is hilarious? What? Speaking of Lord of the Rings, there are, <laughs> on YouTube, there are um, like orcs with normal voices. Have you seen these? Like Amazing. Fan made movies? <laughs> fan made videos? <laughs> what they do is they dub all of the orc and goblin uh, dialogue with just oh they overdub it <laughs> <Yeah>. okay <laughs> it's fantastic because like hilarious. they've got like Mary and Pippin on their backs and they're they're running around and then like one of them was like <laughs> and they what is it <laughs> what do you smell <laughs> man flesh <gasps> oh man they tracked us gosh <laughs> oh so it's the same <laughs> it's script just just with normal voices instead of <laughs> it's, what is, yeah, what is yeah it? right it's man flesh. it's so good yeah man flesh <laughs> yeah phantom menace came out in two, uh, 1999 1999 i was 4 years old yeah i remember that movie coming out my brother got a qui-gon jin action figure mm. qui-gon jin was the coolest liam neeson liam neeson and I got Han Solo because Han Solo is still the coolest Star Wars character. He is pretty cool. Uh, it, although I will say, Mandalorian, if I had never seen Star Wars before sure. and I was just coming Two into totally it totally different characters. Totally different characters. But I think I would say Mandalorian I mean, Mando would be does my all the work to be cool. He doesn't hardly have to say anything. It's amazing. Yeah. It's Whereas so cool. It's all about what Han says. Yes. <laughs> yep. He he yeah. I absolutely love that guy. Yeah. He he's I feel like I was influenced so much by him. And his like Han has like a dorky cool, you know? You know what I'm talking about? Like he Are you he, saying you're dorky cool? <sighs> I'm at least dorky. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I might be cool. But like Han has that dorky cool, like he doesn't quite know what he's doing all the time. Yeah. He's just kind of flying by the seat of his pants, and he's kind of making up crap as he goes, yep. you know. And that's that's one of the reasons I love Han is you know, <laughs> he just and he's a space cowboy, you yeah. know. He's the original space cowboy. So he had some great lines in all, so all the, across all of the movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, and it's Harrison Ford that made that character, yeah. you know, what it was because like when. Leia is watching him. He's about to go into the, the carbon freezing. You know, George Lucas was like, okay, Leia says to you, I love you. And then you say, I love you too. And Harrison Ford is just like, nah. that doesn't sound like Han Solo at all. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just on the spot is like, 
I know. I know. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool. Yeah. That guy was uh, so One good of the things I like, because uh, that's a great line, mm-hmm. but one of the things he would say is, I got a bad feeling about this. Mm-hmm. And then if you watch Solo, <laughs> uh, the, the, the pre kind of backstory of Han yep. Solo, uh, he's this uh, optimistic yeah. dude. He's like, I got a great feeling about this. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> funny to contrast. Somewhere along the line, he man, he got disillusioned mm-hmm. and uh, jaded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> Great role model for yeah. kids. <laughs> you know? So you, um, let's talk about some, let's switch gears here a little yeah. bit. You've been on staff here now, officially not not as the intern. Right. But as the youth pastor here for how long? A couple years, two, two and a half? So two, uh, June 1st, it'll be two years. Two years, June yep. 1st. Yep. It seems longer than that. Well, I mean, I've been here at this church since I was ten. So, well, <laughs> I mean, but I mean, working with the youth, I guess I suppose yeah. that year before when I was kind of helping out a lot, mm-hmm. you were around, um, just kind of as a ramp up to, to yeah, things. Okay. yeah, because I was I was an intern for the fall, and then I I started like in an if like that was this was my job like in April of the the following spring, so it was like. 2019. That's right, because we started doing part interviews time. in the in the yeah. winter time, in the January ish yep. time. Yep. Yeah. That so when we went on that retreat that I ran, yeah, you were, relentless. By then you were officially on staff. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, we still have T-shirts, by the way, we for do. relentless. If you want one, they're either extra large or small. I think, right? If you are either of those, uh, there's a, there's a few larges in there. I probably, think. yeah, probably. Um, Just let us know. No mediums. I think I took all the rest of the mediums, so I have enough to wear for the rest of my life. Probably. <laughs> Just <I> love <laughs> puts one on. Yeah. You know, single use burns it after he's <laughs> I done. I don't do that. And then I, I, in fact, I wear shirts until they disintegrate. Yeah, I that just, happened to me once. I just threw away a shirt yesterday yeah. that started getting holes in the armpit, yeah. and that shirt I probably bought when Phantom Menace came out. See, the the <laughs> longest one that I had, I was 14 when I got this shirt. I remember this because it was at like a youth retreat. So around 10 years ago. And Well, 11 years ago. <laughs> so around 10, close enough. 11. Um, I was sweaty. I, I was taking the shirt off. And you ripped it. And it, it ripped the back. And I was like, th- like at no seams or anything. It just, so apparently I had worn it enough. But anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking about. Because uh, you wanted to switch gears. Yes. So, so you've been around staff now yeah. for a couple years and doing youth ministry. Granted, last year was a very different year. Very different. That even in yeah. the eight some years, seven some, I don't remember how many years I was in youth ministry. Mm-hmm. I never would have. I've never experienced a year like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so taking into account, I guess of that and this past year, and with your, you know, kind of experience ramping up into being on staff here. What are some of the most important things that you've learned, and this is just kind of on the spot. He has not been prepared I have for this not question. been prepared for this. What are some of the most important things that you've learned about teenagers? About teenagers? Yes. Um, that have given you a stronger, I don't know, I'm trying to word this on the spot. Right. That have helped you do your job for back lack of better word uh, your job here better okay that's a very good question and um i'm gonna try to come up with some answers for you <laughs> so i think one thing that i've learned for sure is i love working with youth um because youth don't have like they're not settled you know they're not like this is this is what I believe. This is what I've always been taught because they're still in the middle of being taught, you know. And I absolutely love getting to be a part of forming what their worldview is, their view of God, their view of themselves, their view of the world around them. So I really love that. They're just they're they're more malleable than you know. Like as you get older, you just you know. I'm not malleable at all. Right, you know, and it's hard to be that as you continue to get older. Um, I was, I was like 
moved to tears one day. I was talking to my wife's grandpa on her mom's side, and he's in his 80s, and um, we're talking about something, and you know, some like cultural issue that was kind of controversial or something like that, and 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 he was he was like I I I don't want to have blind spots like I want to I want to still learn you know and I was I was just like I want to be that when I grow up you know I'm growing up now but like when you're that age I, I want to be the kind of person that still learns so I think that's something I love about working with youth is that there's there's a hunger there's you know unsettledness that's something but I think that's probably something I've learned about youth too is that there is an unsettledness that there's questions of identity you know who am I a lot of insecurities um a lot of immaturity and that's probably why I've been hired is I have all of those things so <laughs> it's like um I don't I don't feel a whole like a huge difference between me and them it's like you know like what I'm teaching I'm just like I'm just talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you guys because I'm kind of in the same boat but um yeah so malleableness um you know the need for a relationship is huge um you know I think because I've been serving in youth ministry for a long time at this church um but I used to have so much more of an emphasis on teaching and and that's that's great i mean we we need people to teach and we need people to be passionate about god's word when they teach but there's also the aspect of where we need to have context of relationship if that's going to really if if the teaching is going to settle but you know you can you can teach in a classroom you can teach through relationship you know just having dinner with somebody just hanging out I play a lot of like tabletop RPGs with with youth and and I've just found that man I mean just having friendships is is so huge and you know again that's not that's not specific to youth that's we just need people in our lives you know and so that's that's not like I said specific to them but um I guess I've learned it in ministry is just it's so important just to be a friend you know um, so that'd be something, um, being yourself with people, you know, is, is important. Um, that's I, what you've learned about youth. Well, in interacting with them, you okay. know, and, and that I think you trying to model that for them with the whole identity thing, you know. Like, it's okay to be yourself, yeah. you know? You don't have to have it all together. You can have imperfections, and God still loves you. Um, yeah, I mean, like, how de how deep do you want this question to go? That's why. Because <laughs> like, there know, could you can, be more. If anything, it's good for you to think about um, just on your own. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you another question this way. If there were, speaking to the parents of kids here at, church uh maybe just even abstractly mm -hmm. with no need for an answer what would be some of the questions that you would have for parents out there as you seek to effectively lead their youth <laughs> i'm not sure like <laughs> how do you answer that question i don't know so what would i ask parents Did, would you have any questions of parents that uh you know, that would help, that you might find helpful in, in ministering to their students? I mean, I think something that's, I've, I've started doing this, I want to do this more, is asking parents, like, how can I pray for your kid? Because um, that's, I think that's huge. Because um, it helps me to, like, when you pray for somebody, your soul starts to get knit to that that person. Your heart gets knit to that person. There's a connection because, I think care begins with prayer. So, like, if you're going to love anybody, I think you have to be praying for them. Um, so to know how I can be praying for your, your kids and youth group, um, that's, that's going to grow my love for them. 
Um, and I'm just one person, you know, we need our volunteer team, you know, to be around, you know, the fact that I'm praying for them, you know, I'm still one man, I'm not going to be able to, you know, meet with all of them, you know, individually all the time and, you know, be their best friend and that kind of thing. But to be lifting them up to God in, in prayer, you know, to, to Jesus, who is their best friend. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you, if, you know, if you're listening to this as a, as a parent of, of one of our youth in, in our ministry, um, you know, just feel free to send me a message of how, how I can be praying for your kid. Yeah. Um, cause that's, that's absolutely huge. So Brex C at NRF at NRF life. Dot life. If you're friends with me, on, yeah. Um, you know, when I was in youth ministry, we would oftentimes talk to our leaders and think about it this way, you know, the, the, fraction of amount of time that we get to spend mm-hmm. with these students on a week-to-week basis yeah. it's like comparing a vespa to a harley davidson and we're the vespa and i don't you're even the know harley what that davidson. is a vespa scooter <laughs> oh okay gotcha you know all right we get an hour or two with them yeah. uh, maybe three yep on a week-to-week basis um they're living in your house yep now granted they're at school for eight hours a week right in fact School during these years probably has the most potential for influence mm-hmm. in their life. Yeah. But then it's family second. Yep. You know, it's you guys as parents. And, um, you know, it's a big, big contrast. Mm-hmm. Um, yet our goal is still to try to support you as parents. Yeah. And uh, lead these kids as best we can for the small amount of time that we do get to them, get with them. Yep. Um, cool. Well, maybe your student has told you, maybe they didn't, but, uh, last night, or excuse me, next Wednesday yeah. is what? Next Wednesday is a fun fusion event. Uh, so that's one thing that's going on. It's kind of hang out, have fun. Yeah. Kind of like a mini, mini lock-in. Yep. Relationship building. Yeah. Just kind of. Cause it's, it's our last, um. That's kind of what I was getting at. Well, I, I got one. Okay. <laughs> But um, because it's our last spring Wednesday night, we we are going to start up June 9th. We're going to take a couple weeks off. Next Wednesday to June 9th, there won't be Wednesday night impact. Yep. So next week, party time, celebrate um, our friendships, been growing together um, towards Jesus and just partying, really. And then, yeah, June 9th is when we start off the the summer and if you know if you want to come you know andy's gonna get his head shaved june 9th because <laughs> the youth brought in over 1200 pounds uh that was, it was like 1270 what was what was needed because andy made a bet with them man i don't think you guys can bring enough you know, a week before for, so they had yeah. how many weeks they had like a month they probably had like five, four or five weeks to raise as much weight as they can and the original for cross donation for cross, cross yeah. yeah and the original game uh, the original contest was between high school and middle schoolers yeah and by week one with one week left yeah they had raised like 600 pounds yeah and so i i challenged them to raise double that amount which i had <laughs> no idea i had, yeah. didn't have any i was not threatened i yeah. didn't think they would do that yeah and within a week they doubled the amount that they had raised. Between. More than doubled. Yeah, more than they doubled. They didn't have over almost 1,400 yeah, pounds. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah. And that was my challenge was that yep. they can, uh, they'll I'll shave my head. Yeah. So come June 9th, but next week, this next Wednesday as well, is, is Jaden Watts' last Wednesday night with us. So that's another reason uh, to be there is to thank him for everything that he's done with our youth and our middle schoolers. And, uh, yeah, we're going to miss having him around. So Yeah, and if you didn't yeah. meet Jaden, that's too bad because he, mm-hmm. he's not going to be around much longer for you to get to know. But if you did meet Jaden and you have a student that was impacted by uh, his role here at Northridge, please do let him know how yeah. much that meant. Um, I don't know, get him a, a, a Sayonara gift. I'm sure yeah. him and his uh, new wife, we yep. appreciate that, and uh, he's going to be still keeping an eye on ministry, but trying to expand his experiences in life. He, for not a lot, he's only twenty years old, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's still 
Um, you wouldn't think so. He looks older. Than, he looks older, yeah. and, and uh, he acts older than that. Yep. Um, and he's got an incredible future and potential yep. with um, just who he is, who God made him. And so he's going to explore some of these other areas that will help um, mature and grow some of the other talents and gifts that God has put in him. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's going to be cool to see what God does in his future. Yeah. So make sure you say thank you. Um, give him a gift. I don't know. Uh, next Wednesday we'll be celebrating Jaden. Or you guys will actually be yeah. on vacation. Yeah. Not in Hawaii this ne- year. No, not in Hawaii. But yeah. not this time. Um, any other of youth? Have we talked about the the graduation thing already? Greg and I did. Oh, good. So you don't have to talk about that. Good. Um, any other youth events or things that you'd like to just give a quick plug before we say goodbye? Um, so... High schoolers Sunday morning, uh, we're, we're we've kind of kicked off a, a. Normally in the past, I've done like controversial February, um, where for Sunday mornings for our high school class we talk about something controversial in our in our culture, and so we've talked about in the past we've talked about racism, we've talked about um, the church and politics, we've talked about. Um, sexuality like you know the whole spectrum of that today and um so last week we because i'm making controversial february even more controversial by having it in may uh, so uh we kicked off last week talking about racism and then this week we're going to talk about abortion and uh so if, if you have a high schooler that's interested in coming um and uh, and uh, learning more about that, we're going to talk about that on Sunday morning, nine o'clock. Um, I've uh, we've d- we've done this talk twice before, and it's always had um, had some had a punch with it, you know, not physically, but you know, it really gets gets me uh, to think every year, and it's caused our youth to think. So it's not like a happy note to really, you know end on but i mean we're gonna we're gonna do that hey but Um, i think it's really good to be able to uh create environments where not just youth but people in Mm -hmm. general um can have discussions about these things in a in a safe way in an open way and i think ultimately i'm assuming that the goal would be to come out of there with some sort of biblical worldview yeah definitely but be able to talk about both sides yep and grow and listen and hear from a view that you normally wouldn't maybe carry yep. or hold or position that you would hold. Yep. Um, not so that you would change your mind mm-hmm. necessarily. Maybe you hear something in that, you know, loosens your, you know, view on something and that's fine, but it's more that, uh, Hey, how can we all learn from, yeah. um, the, the holistically in the conversation yeah. and be able to talk about that stuff and, um, and even just practice, those kinds of conversations. Yeah. It's not even matter what the topic is. Right. Just the practice of having hard conversations about um, tricky stuff in, in, yeah. our, in our lives. And uh, I think the more that we have those types of conversations, the better that we'll be able to enter into those in the future, whether yeah. it's people in the church, yeah. whether it's people at work, yeah. family members. I have, you know, yeah. um, a lot of family members that, that you know might hold a different perspective than I do. Yeah. And I I love having conversations of those types with anybody. Yeah. Uh, only if they're going to be, you know, it's civil discourse, right? Yep. So we can talk about it without wanting to punch the other person. Yeah. Or uh, you know, uh, have some inkling of hey, you know what? I might believe this, but I'm going to still listen and be respectful. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so whenever we talk about these things, I always try to lay out like, okay why is it reasonable to be on the other side? Sure. You know, because I think loving our neighbor well um, means listening to them and understanding them. So when I went to college, one of the things I was probably most helped by when it came to this kind of thing was if I'm loving my neighbor well when I can uh, take what they're saying, they're their position, and I can summarize it clearly, and and then if they go, yeah, that's that's my position, 
and you you stated that better than I could have, then that's that's when you're loving your neighbor well intellectually, you know, when it comes to these kind of things. And most of the time, you know, if you're on social media, you're going to see that people aren't doing this well. They're, we're not listening to each other. Um, so to, with our youth, say, okay, why, why is it reasonable? What, what are the reasons that are good that, you, you know, you're not a monster for thinking these things, you know, but what are those arguments on the other side of things? And then to look at them and go, yeah, I could see myself holding that position. That's reasonable. But then, okay, what's, what's our position? What's, what's the biblical worldview around this? Why do we think that? And then just being like, okay, you can, I think the biblical worldview is, is more persuasive. I think it's, it's more beautiful. I think it's, it's more good and right. Um, I think there's something in us that responds to the biblical worldview and says, yes, I want that. That's true and good, and that's what I was created to be. But to, to present both and just be like, you can, you can decide. I'm not telling you what, what to, to believe, but to display both, I think, um, yeah, I think it's, it's loving our neighbor well to, to do that. And, and then we don't end up just, you know, just holding to an idea because it's the only one that we've understood, you know, because I think that happens a lot. Um, or just because our parents, yeah. you know, held that same yeah. belief. Absolutely. Like, why, okay, why do you believe that this this is right and good and beautiful? Um, but yeah, so then too, that they're not in conversation someday, you know, talking to someone who is, is pro-choice and, you know, and they go, well, you just think, you know, or you just want to be able to murder babies out of convenience, you know, like, it might be true in that conversation, but is that helpful in the conversation? I don't think so. Um, there's more at stake in the conversation than just winning an argument, you know? There's, there's a relationship. There's a friendship at stake. There's someone's soul is in the mix, too. You're not going to save them ever, but to, to display the love of Jesus by going, yeah, I could understand why you would, why you would say that that's a good position. You know, there's good arguments on your side. Yeah. Yeah, and the cat's out of the bag already, but, man, I wish we could have never have started to be able to have conversations like that on social media. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, there's like, no... <laughs> it's the worst. It's so bad. It's, it's so bad. And and like you said, it's like, yeah, yeah it's bad. It Don't is. Don't ever have conversations like that online. Just no. talk to somebody face-to-face. Yes, absolutely. I was... I was, um, there's a really good podcast, See Jesus with Paul Miller, or Seeing Jesus with Paul Miller. I can't remember the name exactly, but one of the things that he said that I really appreciated was um, your face and your, your voice in conversation, being present with someone, softens confrontation. Yeah. And, and that's so true. Like, if you're, if you're texting, if you're on social media and you're talking about something, you're reading tone into what they're saying, no matter what. You know, and they're doing the same thing to you. And, and then, you know, words by themselves without the context of relationship and, and body language, facial expression, all that kind of stuff. Um, the words themselves, don't what, they don't mean what they should mean without those things, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I were to have a conversation with somebody who disagrees with me on some moral issue, you know, um, it wouldn't be over social media because I'm not, I'm not going to be heard. They're not going to be heard. And, and both of us, I mean, it's not going to do any good. We're, we're not going to, you know, walk away from that conversation, you know, on social media going, you know what? They brought up some really good points, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm convinced now. I was, I was in a calm state of mind before this happened. And, you know, I didn't just jump onto the comments section because I was, I, I was angry so yeah, now I'm now I'm convinced by all when it, especially when she said you know all that stuff in all caps, man, that was just that was the moment that I, I became pro-choice. You know, it's not going to happen. So um, to have those conversations in person, I think it shows the person that we're talking to as well that we value them as a person enough to have this conversation in person, rather than 
this is convenient and I'm basically I'm just okay with trolling you on social media and <laughs> just making you mad. So, yeah. But it's too late unless we all delete social media. That'd be great. I I, I sometimes I mean, you know what I'm even <laughs> for just like a timeout. Yeah, I let's like timeouts. Put, let's put Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat all in mm-hmm. a timeout and put them yep. you know you have to go to the corner for like 6 months. Yeah. I mean, I th- I wonder sometimes I'm like, <laughs> what power does social media have? Well, the power that social media has is that everyone's using it. Yeah. But if no one people, used it, the people give it the power. Yeah. If no yeah. one used that, then pff, there was a brief moment done. a couple few weeks back where I was having troubles with Facebook. And, That's right. And uh it w- it was <laughs> um it looked like it was the servers or something were down. Yeah. Nothing was and I thought for a moment, I was really excited for a moment. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe. Did Anonymous take them out? it out, yeah. <laughs> uh, that would have been crazy. That would have been nice. Yeah. We, just watch. We're probably not even going to be a, you know, they're now we'll get us, flagged because of down, this. Yeah. 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 No, we think uh, <laughs> it's such an amazing tool. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and the whole internet as a whole. I know yeah. you mentioned something about the internet being uh, just crazy. It talked about, I think Greg and I talked about this last week, that the, the degree of which it can be used for good and helpful yeah. It's the swings the other way. The pendulum yeah. swings the other way. The degree can be used for awful yeah. things, and never get. But again, it's it's like a weapon. It's like mm-hmm. it's only as bad as the way you wield yeah. it. Yeah. And so. So um, can I talk about some? Because I know we're already past our like you know goodbye everyone. <laughs> but um, I I was thinking about this before we even had this conversation before we were talking. So I was kind of hoping this kind of thing would come up. So I'm reading Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. And so. It's it's about a ring, you know, and the the fellowship around it and all that kind of stuff. But Frodo has to carry the ring, and and there's this um, great power in the ring, you know, but um, the potential that it has for evil is is huge, and he's gotta he's gotta bring it to Mordor and destroy it. I don't think that's spoiling anything, you know, if you haven't read it you know if you're easy like me um 20 years <laughs> it's been a, it's been a second but you know <laughs> by the way it's bruce willis the whole time at the end <laughs> um but it it it's it's odd to me that we've we've you know i think that the internet smartphones social media all of that that's like the ring you know like it's got such potential you know, but it's, it, it, like, it's got such potential for evil, and what's crazy to me is that, you know, we, we are so concerned about so many things in our world, you know, we're, we're concerned about, you know, the government overreach, we're concerned about, you know, the economy, we're, we're concerned about all these things, but then, like, we just go, yeah, internet, social media, a smartphone, that's all fine. Like, hold up. Like, like Gandalf is like, Frodo will be the ring bearer. And no one else should do this job. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally no one else. Yeah. Like, Aragorn shouldn't have it. Gandalf himself shouldn't have it. Yeah. Gandalf is concerned if he gets it, it's gonna, that he because would. he's... He's so powerful, yeah. and if he had the ring, he would be the greatest destructive force on the yeah. planet. He said I would use it with intentions of wanting to do good, but it would wield the power. So right. So evil. It baffles me, you know, as I'm reading this book, you know, I'm like, man, we're so concerned about all these exterior things, but we're not so concerned about my own heart and and how my heart uses these powerful tools. Yeah, and that's where I see, you know? like, with the ring in the comparison with the internet mm-hmm. is it's not just that there's this pendulum with the ring there was a cost to wearing it yes it yep. degraded frodo yeah. over and, and anybody else who wore it Gollum. Yep. uh yeah Fro, um bilbo bilbo yep uh it over time and the more that they used that power yeah it degraded their you know their essence and their yeah. being and i think that's what happens when we sp- Spend so much time mm-hmm. online, not yeah. just social media, yep. but the internet in general, streaming, and I'm guilty of it all, just as many mm-hmm. anybody oh, else yeah. is. And I'm yeah. not trying to talk from a place of, you know, 
um, piety or anything. Right. Uh, the the more that we use it, the more that we pay a cost. Yeah. I don't know what that cost always is, and it's right. not always this you know huge huge bill every single time you use it. But right. uh, um, it slowly degrades something in us. Mm -hmm. Um, why wouldn't they just take the eagle? <laughs> I mean, so there's this theory. With Greg, you know. Greg had a, a joke about a moth. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and um, Gandalf whispers to this moth, and it brings back these great eagles. To rescue him off of Yeah, Orthanc, Why wouldn't Gandalf just call the eagles at the yeah. beginning of the show with the right. ring, Put Frodo on its back yeah. and say, go dump this into Mordor. Okay, so there's a few answers to this. Yeah, please give me one. At um, least. <laughs> one of the reasons, one theory is that when Gandalf is in, um, you know, in Moria and he's fighting the Balrog, the Balrog grabs him and Gandalf is about to start flying into the, you know, falling into the abyss to kill, you know, the Balrog. He. You know, he's on the edge, and he looks at the fellowship. He goes, fly, fools. <laughs> so there's this theory that he was actually just telling them, get eagles, get eagles. and just fly. But they, he couldn't, they couldn't get the eagles without it's him. It's true. It's true. But there's another wizard, you know. What's his name? I can't remember. He's the, he's the brown. Oh, so they may, might have the been able Radagast? to find him. Yeah, I think it's Radagast. Yeah, he rode the bunnies. Yeah, he probably could easily talk to eagles. Yeah. The other thing little, is, you know. He was a little crazy, though. Maybe it's kind of like Shadowfax, because Shadowfax uh, is Gandalf's horse, and, you know, Gandalf's riding. What a name for So horse. cool. So cool. I, you know, every time I'm playing a video game and I've got <laughs> to name a horse, <laughs> I'm always like, I just can't name it Shadowfax, because that would just be what everyone does. Yeah. So I don't. But I always name them, like, real people names. Like, like Steve, Bill? Steve. Steve. <laughs> Philip. Yeah, Philip. <laughs> Narnia, that's good. Yeah. But another one, another thought would be that, you know, Sh Gandalf says about Shadowfax that um, Shadowfax will, will let you, he will carry you. You don't ride Shadowfax, yeah. and he will take you to where you want to go if he's willing to go there too. Mm. So maybe that's the thing with the Eagles. Another, you know, just a very practical note. I don't think Tolkien would have had as good of a story. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, if, he, course. if he just did that. Because, I mean, I think I love this story because it's so much like the Christian life, you know, because there are legs of the journey, you know, where you, you step out to go onto this, the journey of the Christian life. And, and then there are spots of rest because then they, they go to Rivendell first and they hang out with um, the king there, uh, Elrond, and then, um, and then later... You know, they kind of go through some some difficult stuff, and then they go to Lothlorien, which is like Rivendell, but like even more awesome. And uh, and then you know they kind of rest there, and there's you know even this kind of like, hey, if you want to stay and not continue, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, but each leg of the journey, they 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 keep going, and uh, I think that's just kind of like. You know, the Christian life is like there there are periods of your life, there are seasons where there's rest, and then and then difficulty follows, and then you get more rest. But I mean, really, like Frodo's on the way, you know, on a very hard journey to put something to death in Mount Doom that he himself finds precious, you know. And I think that that's you know, as much as Tolkien would say my story's not an allegory. Um, it's not an analogy for anything. Like, that's, that's the Christian life. Like, we're, we're on our way constantly to put our flesh to death, our sinful nature to death, so that we can really live. Anyway. Well, and I think even the bigger, like, our love of life itself. Yeah. Not just sin. Yep. Um, but our, our coveting of this life mm -hmm. more than eternal life yeah um but yeah hey folks that's brax carvet he's your youth pastor he's leading your students he's creating crazy awesome conversations on sunday mornings with them and uh we're glad to have him we just did an hour and 
uh, 25 minutes. Hope to see you this weekend. And uh, if you have any questions,